Josh, is there ever a moment when you're in the midst of this and you just like, I think I might be about to cross a line? Uh, this job's easier if I don't have those thoughts. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Good mythical morning. Breakfast. Burrito. Breakfast. Burrito. Breakfast. Burrito. Breakfast. Burrito. They are an angelic creation, but you know what they say, if it ain't broke, let's switch things up and screw with it to make it even better. It's time for Well It Breakfast Burrito. Now there was a kerfuffle of sorts amongst the mythical kitcheneers over what defines a breakfast burrito for this experiment. Yeah, but the kerfuffle, I think it's been kerfuffed yeah. because we've all decided that what makes a breakfast burrito a breakfast burrito is one, it's got a tortilla, mm -hmm. and two, that there is the presence of eggs. Oh, yes. So now that we're all on the same page, I'm in the mood for the presence of our first altered tortilla tube. Okay, well let's start off with a breakfast burrito that's chock full of Popeye's Louisiana spice. But will it be Louisiana nice? We've got Popeye's chicken in a burrito. We're calling it the Poprito, AKA the Louisiana Slammer. Oh, Louisiana Slammer. Josh, what did you do? So I made a hash brown patty out of the Cajun rice and mashed potatoes, and then oh, I actually turned the thing? chicken tenders into a chorizo what? with a spicy mayo pickle salsa and homage to the sandwich, and then of course <sighs> eggs that have been poached in gravy. Man, that sounds like it should be illegal, Josh. Eggs okay. poached in gravy, does that have a name? The, nah, it's it's up to you, you got it. Um, Greg's. Uh, a brown poachy. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm. Oh, you're already eating? Oh man. That's fabulous. Man, the way that came together. You went above and beyond because I was thinking you're just gonna like chop up hunks of chicken, like fried chicken, and that would have been fabulous too. Yeah, if you had done that, we'd still be enjoying ourselves. But you turned chicken into a chorizo mix? The chorizo is so wow. good, man. Mm, okay, well, this was very simple. I'm just, the only thing that's not simple is me stopping myself from continuing I know. to eat all of it right I'm now. I'm so hungry and so Happy Popeyes, will it breakfast burrito? Yes. I've been missing popcorn because I've been missing all the places that I generally associate with popcorn, like movie theaters, baseball stadiums. I even miss the circus, and I don't even like the circus. That's what I thought. Or baseball, right. actually. <laughs> Anyways, is a popcorn breakfast burrito a home run or just Josh clowning around? That's what I'm getting at. This is the Orville Redden Burrito. Okay. It's got some popcorn in it, I hope. How'd you do it? It sure does. What so else did you the, do? I crusted the potatoes in movie theater popcorn, then scrambled some of that into the eggs, oh. and then I crusted the bacon with kettle corn, and then took zebra popcorn, the one with the chocolate on it, and then pureed that in with the beans. So you went zebra? Ch chocolate oh, we went taste? zebra on it. You went full zebra? Full, so, always go full zebra. So I have isolated just a popcorn encrusted potato. That seems nice. I'm gonna just eat it in the context of the burrito. That's fine. Mmm! That is buttery. Interesting. Well, it's the chocolate that you gotta you gotta contend with. I I don't mind the chocolate because you like, definitely took a risk. The chocolate and that. bacon. I like chocolate and bacon together. Mm-hmm. I think some of that crunchiness, you think it's bacon, but some of it is just popcorn. I assume that some of it is just popcorn. I got there's assume, popcorn in there. I gotta assume that some of it is just bacon. And it, it's very corny. No, I mean it's I mean it's beautiful. And I'm very proud of it. Nothing about it is corny in the, in the traditional sense. It's just literally corny. Thanks, I'm proud it, of you it, too. It, you're not hiding the popcorn experience. Which you're not hiding the corn, which I, I respect. You know, never That's a fun game. never play hide the corn. Hide the corn? Oh, I love playing hide the corn. <laughs> I play it all the time. Why are you saying never play it? Well, is there a hazard I don't know about? All I'm saying is, if you're gonna play hide the corn, you need to be prepared to deal with the consequences, which could be a baby. What? I don't, I don't follow. I just don't want anybody eating my corn. <laughs> I like this. Me too. Popcorn, will it breakfast burrito? Yes. yes. Before we get to the next round, we have a big announcement. We're bringing back the Golden Tea of Mythicality giveaway for 2020. So we've got this all new silver design shirt that you can buy. Pretty cool, huh? But when you receive this shirt that you buy, 
you may find that it's a different color, and that means that you won something amazing. Right, you might receive the blue one. And if you receive the blue Ooh. one, you know what that means? That means that you get one year of free merch. You might receive the orange oh, shirt. So that's all the merch that we make in a whole year. Every single thing we release get for the entire year. All of it. The oh. orange shirt means you win a virtual taste test with these two guys named Rhett and Link. That's us. Wanna hang out with us and eat something virtually? And if you get the gold shirt, that means that you win a signed check for $18,000. What? In honor of season 18 of Good Mythical Morning. $18,000 if you get this shirt. Yes. Did he say that? Yes, I did. I, it, it bears repeating. The kick away, the kick away. The ki let's just kick it away. <laughs> the giveaway kicks off today. It runs through October 16th, so only a few days. So grab this shirt now at mythical.com. And unfortunately, just like last time, this is available only to US and Canadian mythical beasts. That's not something that we decide. That yeah. is something that your governments decide because it's actually illegal for us to do a contest that goes to multiple places. But to Sorry. make it up for you, uh, we wanna give you a $5 discount on the silver tea exclusively for beasts outside of the US and Canada. And for all the details, go to mythical.com. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Now let's get to the next burrito. Yes. You can certainly buy yourself breakfast at 7-Eleven, I've done it, but we're interested in a breakfast that captures the entire essence of 7-Eleven. So we got all the best 7-Eleven snacks in a burrito and we are calling this the 7-Eleven Big Gulparino. Josh. Gulparito. What did you do? So I scrambled Slim Jims in with the eggs and I took Coke Slurpee, reduced it down, glazed some Canadian bacon with that. Shoved a big bite of hot dog right in the center, and then we crusted the whole thing in nacho cheese Doritos and deep fried it. What, this is a deep fried burrito? Oh, oh yeah. Look at that wiener just sitting in there. Look it's, at that wiener. It's begging to be bitten. Oh begging that gosh. wiener. Oh man. It is what you think it is. It's very rich. It seems like something you'd hurt yourself making. Yeah, we got a couple scars. Yeah. The crunchy outer Dorito layer, that's a lot of fun. And I didn't get any of that um, Coke encrusted bacon, is that what you said? Uh, Canadian bacon. Mm. When you commit to eating something that's you know on one of the rollers at 7-Eleven, you already made a life decision, right? Yep. You've made a decision that today, today is not about whether or not something bad happens to me 30 or 40 years from now. Today is about me today. enjoying myself right now. Ain't nothing wrong with pulling something off a roller every now and again, so why not roll it all together? Yeah. That, this is definitely working. I think we could get 7-Eleven in on this. Come on, y'all. We have to charge like a $1.99 for it, though. Will it breakfast burrito? Yes. yes. You know the motto we live by in the Neil house, always stay hydrated. Yep. So when it comes to breakfast burritos, uh, they're supposed to get you ready to tackle your day, but my main concern is that they may not hydrate you enough or add enough sporty electrolytes into your life. Okay. So I wanted to solve that. Maybe we have with the Gatorade Arito. Gatorade Arito? That sounds good, doesn't it? Say it. Get, you got a little something on your chin, Gatorade oh, yeah? Arito. Oh yeah, oh yeah? How about now, Gatorade Arito? Gatorade Arito. Gatorade Arito. How do you get Gatorade into a Gatorade Arito, Josh? Oh, you, you do your best. So we took Riptide Rush and we reduced that, we added that to the eggs, then we took- Is that, is that purple? That's the purple. Then we took Blue Glacier Freeze and then we coated the potatoes in that and then we candied the bacon in orange Gatorade and then made a Fruit Punch Gatorade Salsa. All right, here we go. Gotta get that cross section. Oh, smell of it first, just smell it at it. It smells like Gatorade. <laughs> at every turn. It's kinda candied. That's, I'm a little scared. Mm. Okay, you're having some issues. Um, it's pretty Gatorade forward. Um, wow. There's something about the way that my mouth feels and what mm -hmm. my tongue tastes that is sort of difficult to reconcile right, right now. It's like brain surgery has happened where my feeling part of my brain and my tasting part of my brain have been entirely disconnected. Those are some of my favorite videos to watch when someone's getting brain surgery and they start pressing on their brain and they're like A, B, C, you know, like, I love those videos. Or singing a song that they've made up, like. Sometimes they want you to do something that you're good at while you're 
sing by they're doing the brain operation to make sure robot? that you can still sing. You know, you saw the person that played the violin the whole time they were getting their brain oh, operated yeah. on, so they could maintain the ability to play the violin. I want that not to happen to me. I mean, this is not pretty either. But it's there's something it's off-putting a, about purple it's eggs. It's a bit ugly. I mean, it works. It works in like children's books. Yeah. Well, this ain't a children's book, Josh. You have a childlike sense of wonderment and adventure. I, in general, But we're yes. so hydrated. We're, look at how athletic we are all of a sudden. I think when you reduce Gatorade, you lose the hydration qualities because there's not like this water sitting in here. I ha! Think we, caught, we got you, Josh. We I, got I you. We see, got you. Gatorade. Will it breakfast burrito? No. no. And finally, a riddle. Oh. What's white and white and wrapped in a tortilla? No, I'm not talking about the time we got lost in a Chipotle kitchen. The answer we were looking for is a mayo breakfast burrito. Behold, the mayo rito or the burrito nays, whichever you prefer. Oh, man. So there's a lot of mayonnaise in here. This is mushy and yeah, yeah. white. Okay, first tell me what you did, and then I'll try to remember why we're doing it. Well, so it all starts with a base of pure scrambled mayonnaise. You can just scramble <laughs> straight mayonnaise, and we did scramble straight mayonnaise, and then we mixed mayonnaise into some pinto beans, Mix a lot of mayonnaise in with some potatoes. We made a bacon fat mayonnaise to kind of round it all out and uh, have fun. So this is high calorie, maybe? Yeah, it's keto. It's keto. Like, I don't know what keto is. It's so, this is so oily and mushy. It's like a custard. <laughs> Kinda. Think of it like a custard. It's like a- And there's beans. It's a greasy quiche. Oh, uh, there's a little bit of guac in there. There's guac in here? Yeah, you can, you'll find the guac somewhere. You'll find the well, guac. That's mayonnaise guac. Right, so. That's what they. That's why we went into the Chipotle kitchen that time. They said, you'll find the guac. Yeah. Next thing you know, we're wrapped up in a giant tortilla. <laughs> I smell nothing but mayonnaise. Smell of that. I like, I don't, I like mayonnaise. I have a, a, what I think is a relatively high tolerance for mayonnaise. Dink it. A dink it. Uh, here's that. Oh, mm -mm. Okay. That's some hot mayonnaise, man. Oh yeah. Woo. That is some hot mayonnaise. Um. <clears throat> well, you know you're getting mayonnaise. Why am I even chewing? Um. <laughs> you kind of have to chew the beans a little bit. Um. I can't tell what. I, what it's all just one gushing group of whiteness. Uh, Josh, is there ever a moment mm -hmm. when you're in the midst of this yeah. <clears throat> and you just like? I think I might be about to cross a line. Uh, this job's easier if I don't have those thoughts. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how you stay on track. Uh, yeah. I find this job there is easiest no when you have no thoughts. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go in for another bite because. Why not? It's not horrible. horrible. I don't, but why are we doing this? If there was a why, that would help me maybe tip the scales well, a little bit. I've always thought the reason that we do these Willet episodes is because one of these days, the aliens are gonna show up on Earth and all that will be left of humans is just the remnants of our civilization. Uh -huh. And they're gonna be like having to deal with the natural ingredients and life forms that come from Earth and having to sort of recreate life here and they're gonna end up kinda coming to the same conclusions that we did culinarily. And they're gonna need some sort of written or maybe <laughs> digital record that they can investigate and then they come to the conclusion of what kind of burritos are we gonna make? Because eventually they'll form the idea that they need to make a burrito because how could you not? Because kind of a burrito is sort of inevitable. But then when they begin to combine things and make burritos, they need to know whether or not the aliens need to make a burrito that has mayonnaise in it. A breakfast burrito. Mayo, will it breakfast burrito? Hold on, burrito? I haven't taken my second bite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that you're reminded. Okay, I got my answer. Mayo, will it breakfast burrito? No. no. Sorry, aliens. Take note, aliens. Keep moving down the line. You'll yeah. find something you like. Don't don't waste your your grease on that one. Good job, though. Yeah, right. Thanks, you too. Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. Ten. Hi, this is Melinda in Portland. I'm directing the morning news. Five, stand by. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Making me nervous. Right, she's well, like, whoa, making a video. I, was she kept, fake directing? I think that she's doing the real thing. I mean, I want to believe that. Click the top link to watch us decide which vegan yogurts taste most like the real thing in good mythical morning. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is gonna land. Enter the 2020 Golden Tea of Mythicality giveaway before October 16th for a chance to win one of three extraordinary prizes, including $18,000. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited.